For QIC cartridge tape baking, um, I use the Nesco Professional Food and Jerky Dehydrator only because um, it was relatively inexpensive for me to acquire one used. And it has um, uh, temperature control, which is relatively accurate, but the point is that it has finer temperature control rather than just low, medium, or high. The ability to control the temperature within a very specific range is very important with these types of cartridges. And I think just with um, this era of tape baking in general, uh, just to make sure that it gets hot enough to be effective, but uh, does not get too hot so that it damages the tape. So I have, um, this particular dehydrator has several levels. I believe it has two or three more of these. Now, in order to verify the correct temperature um, to maintain this at, I actually am using three thermometers. So the ideal temperature uh, for these tapes is actually between, it's actually right at 138 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is incredibly close to, I believe, 58 or 59 degrees Celsius. So what I've done, because I've, uh, because such a high degree of accuracy is required here, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money on um, very high-end uh, digital thermometers, I actually went to Harbor Freight and got three very, very inexpensive uh, uh, thermometers that were usually you know, about five or six dollars each at the most. And I decided that if I use three of them, the chances that uh, one is significantly out of synchronization um, is fairly low. If I get all three of them to agree, chances are that the temperature is correct. And, I, and that's what I've done, and that's what I've had a great deal of success with. Now, this, um, this dehydrator has removable sections, where each of these sections comes apart, and it's originally designed to house um, meat or other things that you're going to dehydrate is food. So um, this particular one lends itself very, very perfectly to the uh, the size of the QIC tape cartridge. And so what I've done is I've just drilled a hole like this, only over here, which is just the right size for the uh, for the um, probe to go through. And I've done that in just the right area of this uh, tray, which I'll show you in a minute. But basically what I've done is I wanted to take a, a temperature sample. I wanted to do a couple things with this process. I wanted to take a temperature sample below the tapes, between the tapes, and above the tapes. So that I knew that the area of the tapes was actually, uh, I was reading the correct uh, temperature reading. But not only that, I'm also, I've also switched these around some just to make sure that they... Um, well, they're accurate to each other. In other words, this one isn't five degrees off of this one, or ten degrees hotter or ten degrees colder than this one is, or any of these. So they're really very, very close. I find that the one uh, that's higher is, you know, a couple of degrees um, warmer than this, and, you know, usually one or two, and that's a couple of degrees warmer than this. Now, this one down here at the bottom, I see that this is... Um, a significant amount difference and what I'm finding is it depends on whether there's a tape between them or not it also could have to do with the fact that I've recently lifted off uh, the sections and the heat comes from above and and is pushed down through the edges and then comes back up through the bottom and, and raises that's how the convection of these things actually work but when I keep it between the 135 to 140 range that usually does pretty well where the top one may be just right at 140 and the lower one might be one right at 136 137 that's the perfect range that I have so right now um, I'm only doing a few tapes at a, at a time and I have tapes between this section and this section and I have tapes between this section and this section and I will next show you the arrangement of those so that you can see um, how I've done this and how I've inserted the, you know, where I drilled the holes so that these probes could fit in just right. I imagine that what I'm doing here is just a little bit overkill, but the tapes that I wanted to bake 
um, after I was done testing, make sure I didn't destroy anything. The tapes that I wanted to bake were pretty much one of a kind. Didn't know where to get them anywhere else. They also contained data that I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere else. So I wanted to make sure that I did not damage them. So I, you know, I wanted to over-design this a little bit to make sure that I was very careful that it, uh, that it worked just right. So, you see this is at 138. It usually cycles with the, you know, the temperature control here on this device. It usually cycles just a few degrees, which I think is just fine. So it, it bounces between 138 and 140. Uh, this one uh, is at about 136, 137, the analog one. And the bottom one here is a little bit lower at 133. It should bop up to 134, because I've just raised the temperature ever so slightly uh, just to synchronize this. Now, let's have a look at uh, what the tapes look like inside. So inside I have a couple layers of tapes. Um, I guess that's the top layer. I don't intend to have any there. But you can see how I've inserted the probe just above the grating on this, uh, on this top layer here. And even though there is a ring here between these two, I just wanted to have a spacer so that there was more even temperature. I could put this right against this so it's really close to the tape, but I wanted to have a little space air buffer before, so that we could have a more even uh, heat distribution on the tapes. So now if we take off this layer, we can see that I have tapes sitting right here. And so in this case, we have a probe that ends up sitting, we have a probe that ends up sitting just above the tapes, and then there's one that's sitting just below the tapes, and then there's another layer of tapes beneath that, and then there's a probe beneath that. And I also get a few degrees variance whether or not uh, there is a tape that is directly above the, uh, the, the thermometer probe or not. And you might notice that I've also thrown in here an audio cassette just for good measure. So let me talk some more specifics about these. Now you might notice that uh, the tape here doesn't have the cover on it and also maybe even more importantly doesn't have the tension band installed. What I've done is I've removed the cover, um, the, 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 plastic, the plastic cover on the top, just left the, uh, the plate on the bottom, and I've also removed the tension bands and the rollers, and I've set them aside. Um, I don't think that uh, the heat like this would damage them, but um, Al Caso in particular and Chuck um, Al at the Computer History Museum has done um, hundreds and hundreds of these, as has Chuck. And most of what I've done uh, here is um, inspired by or what I learned from reading their uh, CC Talk posts. And so this is inspired by them. So I want to take a moment to actually thank them for sharing that knowledge. And all I've done is um, put it to use here and maybe created some videos and a website about it so that it's easier to follow all in one concise package and one doesn't have to search quite as hard as I did to find all of the important details. Anyway, so the, the, the cover is removed from this, the tension band is removed from this, and what I've done here is I've simply taken, I've simply taken a, um, a piece of scotch tape here and I've taken the tape away from these areas right here. I've taken the tape so it's not in contact with any of the metal pieces. What I've found is when I've baked it, when it, it does come in contact with the metal pieces, um, it actually will stick to the metal piece. And so after it cools, I have to peel it away, and I'm afraid that it might, uh, you know, peel off some of the magnetic coating. Now, I never, I never bake a tape where it's not all the way at the beginning or all of the way at the end. I want to make sure that the amount that it's exposed here um, is never any with is never any uh, amount of tape that has data on it or any kind of magnetic tape signature on it, any kind of magnetic flux transitions on it. So I always make sure that it's wound all the way one way or the other, just so that I reduce the uh, the chances that anything like that's going to happen. So that is uh, one of the many ways that I that I um, uh, prepare the tapes for baking. Um, I have another video that actually talks about how I change these tension bands. I have two different versions of that, uh, an original and an improved version, so you can see um, basically how I put this on and using my method how relatively easy it is to put back on after uh, you know the tape has been baked like this. Now here's another layer of, of tapes that I've been working with and you might notice this one I don't even have on a cartridge. Um, all I've done is um, 
held it together with a couple pieces of scotch tape. And by the way, that's, that's what I've done here. This is scotch tape, uh, the invisible sticky kind, you know, like, like this kind, this kind of scotch tape, not to be confused with this if the brand happens to be scotch. <laughs> the magnetic tape kind, no. Um, <clears throat> so I just put one piece there uh, to hold the reels from spinning so that this doesn't, um, you know, vibrate loose and uh, start to rest against, the tape doesn't start to rest against some of the metal pieces which it has a tendency to stick to. Um, I also, uh, the amount of time that I bake these for these older tapes it's usually several days. I make sure that the that the system is running well, um, running normally, um, doesn't have any temperature fluctuations or spikes, and then I'll just let it run for days. I'll check on it every couple of hours. I go to sleep, wake up in the morning, check on it, go to work, come back, check on it. It's all good, and uh, I've hadn't ha haven't had any problems with that um, using that particular method, but. I have baked tapes for maybe just 24 hours uh, that have never been baked before, and I still had some evidence of sticky shed syndrome um, when I tried to read them in the QIC tape reader. And so I took them out and I baked them again for another several days, and that really seemed to take care of it. Also I'm finding that even though I will keep the tapes after baking and after reading in um, a baggie like this where I have some uh, desiccant desiccant silica gel in the, in the baggie and it's a, it's a quality Ziploc bag that I keep sealed. Even stored like this in a matter of months the sticky shed syndrome does have a tendency to return. So um, I find that I will need to rebake tapes if I want to read them again if I've developed like a new technique or uh, wanted to you know read a couple of blocks over again that I had errors in uh, so on and so forth. So it is an important process, and so having things set up right, I think, is uh, is good. And and again, I really want to thank um, the contributors, mainly Alan Chuck and many others on CC Talk and other um, uh, v VCF, uh, the Vintage Computer Federation uh, forum, um, for sharing all of the details that they have about the processes uh, that they've used over the years, uh, successfully baking, restoring, and reading hundreds of tapes. So hopefully, what I'm doing here only adds to that. So that is a little bit about my um, tape baking system and so far uh, unlike Alan Chuck instead of hundreds of tapes I've only baked a couple of dozen uh, successfully and using this method uh, there haven't been any tapes so far that I haven't been able to read successfully uh, or it, 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 using this process. Now there's a lot more to reading something successfully than just getting rid of sticky shed syndrome but uh, this has actually worked very well for me so far. So again, just a couple dozen tapes, and uh, this, is, this is a system that I'm using for that. So Hopefully this helps uh, your QIC tape restoration process and project, and uh, please uh, let me know in the comments um, if you have any questions or comments or if this helps you. Thank you.